Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will be another recent favorite books video. My last recent favorite books video, which I'll link down below, I talked about how I want to make more videos talking about my recent favorite books, books that I've read in the last few months that I love and that I want to talk about because I feel like they don't get the spotlight that they deserve in my wrap-ups, so I thought I would just do this type of video. This particular video is from March and April, and everything that I read in those months that I loved and that I want to talk more about and just gush about and love and talk and all of that. Let me just jump straight in. A new favorite is a series. It's not just one book, but I will probably primarily talk about book one because I don't want to spoil things, obviously. And that is the Off Balance series by Lucia Franco. The first book is Balance, and I talked about this in my March wrap-up. I also totally mispronounced the author's name in that video. I'm so sorry. I should have looked up how to say her name, and I didn't, and I just assumed. This is a really controversial book and series, and I understand that, and I think everybody's opinions on this book are very valid, and I am not ignoring that or erasing those concerns and opinions, but I loved the series. I binged it in March. I fell in love. I just thought it was so addicting and just so forbidden, and there was just something about this series that made me want to keep reading, and that just pulled me. I feel like I can't really explain why. So this follows this uh, gymnast who is 15 years old and she wants to make it to the Olympics. That's her big dream and so her dad helps her move to this new place that has this excellent and amazing gym where they ch train gymnasts. And that's where she meets her new coach who is 30 years old and they fall in love. It's very forbidden. It's very taboo. This book was banned off of Amazon because, I mean, our female character is underage. She's 15. I would say this is one of the most taboo books I've ever read just because of the age difference. I know it was also banned because of the whole gymnast and coach thing. There was that one Olympic gymnast that came out and said her coach abused her and stuff. So I think a lot of people also hated this book because of that. So I understand why people attacked this series and this author, but I do feel like there were better ways to handle this kind of situation and just spamming and sending hate and really not nice things to an author who just wrote like a fucked up love story. It was valid, but I think there would have been nicer and better ways to handle the whole situation. You should never read something that makes you uncomfortable and that makes you feel like gross and stuff. Like truly, if something bothers you, like you should not read it. I never shy away from any type of dark romance or forbidden taboo romances. I think the more taboo they are, the more I love them. And there was something about this series that was really addicting and I just wanted to find out what happened. I feel like book one is the tamest out of them all because it just gets crazier and crazier and crazier as the books go on. The last book is not out yet, fingers crossed, it is coming out very soon. The author did reveal that she is changing the books a little bit, that she has decided to change the age and the setting or like where it takes place so that she can re-upload them to Amazon so that she doesn't interfere with any of their rules and stuff which kind of makes me sad because she wrote them the way that they were written like she shouldn't have to change them but like I also understand that you know she wants to put them back on Amazon and to do that she has to follow the rules and I get it but it also just kind of makes me sad that an author has to kind of change the way that they wrote something. I'm not that type of person that will hate on what other people love or don't love. Like when I read something, I'm always like, oh, I can see why somebody loves this, but I just don't. Or vice versa. Like I can see why somebody hates this, but I love it. I'm not a critical reviewer or critical reader in any way. I'm just not critical about books because to me, at the end of the day, they are fiction. They are books. They are there to entertain you or to 
get a rise out of you or some sort of emotion and this series did that for me it was a roller coaster of emotions the books got way more intense and crazier when i get engulfed in a series or a book I want it to have all of these highs and these lows and I want it to be sometimes like batshit crazy and I want it to sometimes be a little unbelievable because sometimes like tame, believable, sweet romances just don't do it for me. Sometimes I need that crazy wild ride and this series definitely gave it to me. I do understand the whole like power dynamic but again to me like I just think of this as fiction. This is a book. This does not mean that I support this type of relationship in real life. This doesn't mean that this is something I value. It, it's the same thing for dark romance. Would I support a real life person who kills somebody? Of course not. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's fiction. Just because I love this book doesn't mean that I support this type of thing in real life or that I want this for me. Like, that's not at all what it is. It's just fiction. I enjoyed it. I found it entertaining. I literally binged all four books in a couple of days and they are massive books and I just love them. I loved the characters. I love how they were just over the top and dramatic. Like I am a sucker for those type of romances. I know a lot of people don't love them but I love them. The first book doesn't really portray it that well I don't think. They're both very manipulative um, which I think is why they are perfect for each other because they're both fucking crazy. I hope that I can buy physical copies of this series really really soon and I hope that the last book comes out very soon but I'm also really scared because I've heard that the author has changed things and I don't know if she's just referring to the ages and the setting but overall I'm very scared. If you like a lot of the same books as me you might like this but just be very wary and be careful. You can buy them on iBooks and off her website I do believe. If you have any other specific questions about the series um, before you want to purchase it or whatever, let me know. Like, I will respond to your questions about it because I feel like I'm not really explaining it very well or, like, how controversial it is. But when I read it, like, I didn't think it was that bad because I think I read a lot of dark romances and a lot of taboo romances that do have, like, dubious consent and stuff like that that, like, I didn't think it was that bad but also like I guess I'm used to those kinds of books so it doesn't really bother me. So yeah that was a huge favorite of mine. I really love this series. I don't recommend it for everybody but um if you want to give it a shot go ahead. The next one is Sweet Temptation by Cora Riley. This is one of her newer standalones and this I loved. Also I gave all of the Off Balance books four stars and I also gave this four stars. This is a arranged marriage mafia romance single dad. I feel like this is Cora Riley's cutest book. It's not that dark. It doesn't show a lot of mafia aspects. It shows more of like a family dynamic. So this follows Cassio who has lost his wife and he has two small children. He essentially now needs a new wife and kind of like a mother to his children and obviously in this mafia world it's very traditional and they have a lot of arranged marriage. So Cassio gets wrapped up in this arranged marriage with Julia who is very very young. She turns 18 or 19 and he's like in his 30s I do believe. So there is an age gap with this one as well and it's just about Cassio and Julia finding their new normal and getting to know each other and Julia becoming a wife and now a mother. It's about her adapting to her role and also just building this family with Cassio and I really really loved it. Um, it was definitely more character driven than plot driven but I guess because this is you know a standalone I think it deserved to focus more on the characters than the mafia aspect. I really loved both characters and their romance. I loved how they had a very like slow build. I loved how Julia was kind of like the shy girl and she like slowly opened up and, and became like kind of this badass take control woman and um she definitely <laughs> lost Cassio around and I loved it. If you're intimidated by Cora's books, like if you don't really know where to start, I would say that this is a good option and it's mildly connected to her other books. I mean there are a few spoilers but I think like 
if you don't mind, this I think would be a great place to start. My hair is getting so long, it's just not curling and it's not holding a curl anymore. It's driving me literally insane. Another new favorite is Southern Storms by Brittany Cherry. This I just really loved. I gave this five out of five stars. It's definitely one of my new favorite books like ever. I just really really love it. This is such a beautiful and emotional book but I feel like all of this author's works are emotional and heavy and beautiful. This follows our female character who has had kind of a rough relationship. She's getting over a divorce and she decides to move to this small town where her sister lives and she meets our male character who they kind of have a rough run in and they kind of butt heads a little bit at first and then they slowly like build this friendship and then they both figure out that they knew each other when they were kids and that they had this insane connection and friendship when they were children at the summer camp. It's about them building up this friendship but obviously it's a lot more than that and it's just such a beautiful book. I'm not describing it very well but I absolutely loved it. It's so beautiful and I loved the whole moon and sun symbolism thing like I'm totally into all of that. Clearly I have a moon tattoo so I just I loved that aspect of this book. I loved the characters, I loved the romance. It was just such a beautiful and wonderful crying heartwarming book. I, I really loved it. I'm sorry if you can hear other noise they're home in the basement and they're making a lot of noise today and it's driving me a little crazy. But, um, sorry about, like, if you hear yelling children, it's the basement. The next favorite is Undercover Bromance by Alyssa K. Adams, which is a book that kind of caught me by surprise because I had read the first book and enjoyed the first book, but I loved this one so much more. This, I did get four stars, which... I also gave the first book four stars, but this one is better in my opinion. <laughs> this made me cry. This made me laugh. I was actually like crying tears of laughter. It was so funny. So much more funnier than the first book. Also so much more serious as well. So this follows Liv who works at this really popular famous restaurant. And one night she sees her boss harassing another female employee and Liv doesn't really take a stand for it. She kind of stands up to him and he ends up firing her. She kind of runs into Mac on the night that she gets fired and kind of confesses what happened. And Mac is willing to help her kind of take revenge on her boss. It's obviously a lot more serious because it does deal with harassment and a man abusing his power and all of those things but I do feel like the funny also balanced that seriousness out for me and the Russian is just so funny. He's literally my favorite character. I cannot wait for his book. I'm so excited. He made me laugh this entire book and there's one scene specifically in here that I barely could finish reading it because I was la laughing and crying so much that like I almost couldn't finish reading it because I was like, this is so funny. It's the one scene where they break into the office. I can't remember the last time I've ever laughed that much before while reading a book. I just also really loved the romance and the characters. I do feel like it didn't have that much romance, but... I feel like with everything going on, it did balance the book out really well. Like all the seriousness and the funny stuff and the romance just kind of all worked and it was like an equal balance of all of them and I just really loved this book. I just thought it was really, really well done. I don't understand why nobody loved this one. Like I really, really loved it and I know a lot of people commented in my April wrap up said that they also really loved it, like loved it more than the first book, which I obviously totally agree. And I'm also really happy there was no inserts of the romance novel in here of whatever they were reading in their book club because I just found that extremely boring in the first book and I skimmed a lot of that because I didn't really care about what romance book they were reading. So I'm glad that wasn't in here. Because it is in third person, which I've talked about before, how it's really hard for me to connect to third person novels but I feel like even though this is in third person the author is really great at having a lot of dialogue and also not so much inner thoughts which I love 
and I feel like it doesn't make the book that boring or too long or just like pages of inner dialogue and inner thoughts because sometimes I just don't give a shit. I just want to see the characters talking like I just want to I want them to have a conversation and I want it to be written down. I don't want it to be like insinuated in their thoughts or the way they look at each other. Like I want some dialogue. Overall it was really good. I just really loved this book. It was great. And the last recent favorite that I have is Talking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco which is kind of a weird pick because this is YA. This is not really a romance. It's like a historical mystery. There's a slight romance aspect, but it's also kind of not there yet. But I just really loved this. So this follows Audrey Rose, who is fascinated and interested in forensics. And she is really interested in like corpses and like dead bodies finding out like what the cause of death is and all of that and her uncle does that for a living so she kind of learns from him and he also teaches a class about all that so that's where she meets our male character Thomas. Our characters kind of build this friendship and there are a bunch of murders that are happening in their town where all of these women are getting killed and a lot of their body parts or organs are being taken by this killer and they kind of team up to try to figure out who is the killer and it's really interesting it is obviously based on uh jack the ripper i do feel like obviously because this is ya like the killer is kind of obvious or like i don't know it gives you like hints of who it is and i had three suspects which are basically all of the suspects that they have but i felt like it did a really good job and i cannot wait to continue this series. A lot of you guys have said that book two is your favorite and I've also heard that from other people as well. So I'm very excited to continue this series. I just really loved the whole mystery element. I loved how it was historical. I loved the characters and their slow like friendship and romance. Super cute. They were always like really flirty with each other. Overall this book was just really good. I loved the whole setting. I can see why so many people love the series because it's definitely a new favorite. I highly recommend it because I did really really love it. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I feel like my thoughts were all over the place. I'm so sorry. It's sometimes really hard to talk about your new favorite books, like to give coherent, important thoughts about your new favorite books. It's really difficult. I'm finding it really, really hard to gush about my new favorite books, but I really loved all of these books and some of them may appear in my favorite books of 2020. So who knows? Let me know some of your recent favorite books. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, Follow me on all my other social media, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!